I have drawn all of this with the assumption that n is equal to 2. What happens if I have the same sort of system, right? U, V, and W delay elements, but I arbitrarily choose n equal to 3. Okay. What happens if I choose n equal to 3? Effectively, now what I'm saying is that the phases of the clock are going to go as 0, 1, 2. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Let's say that I now choose TU is equal to 0 and TV is equal to, let's say, 2. Okay. Effectively, all that I'm saying over there then is if I have a time sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., the phases of the clock go as 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, etc. Right? This is the repeating pattern. And therefore, the execution will basically become u0, nothing at time 1, v0 over here, then u1, nothing here, v1, u2, nothing here, etc. Okay? And what it means in turn is that, supposing I had something like this, if w was equal to 1, then I'll basically have that this is the dependency, u0 to v1, right? And similarly, from u1 to v2 and so on. Okay. So the reason I just brought in this example is to show that the n equal to 2 was not necessary. I could have chosen any n greater than or equal to 2 and still got a valid architecture, right? There's nothing wrong with this. Now, of course, the question that arises is then how many registers need to come into the picture, right? If you look through this carefully, you will actually be able to identify exactly how many registers. In this case, what I need is I need to make sure that the u0 is saved until this point, right? It's needed over here. So I need to save it for one, two, three, four clock cycles. Okay. Now, where did I get that four from? It's not as simple as, you know, just sort of uh, saying, oh, in the previous case, it was two and now it's four. No, there's a systematic way by which you can derive the exact number of uh, cycles for which you need to store the value of u. And that's what we are going to look at next, right? That number of registers, how much you need to save it is essentially defined by this term over here, right? Which uh, we call as df. So the df is in some sense the number of extra registers that is required in order to save the value of data that we need until it is actually used. Okay. Once again, let's start from the original thing, right? I have a, a two actors, u and v, connected by a single edge. The only constraint that is there between the starting times of u and v, right, is given by this condition that if u starts at time t u and the hardware unit that I have has a latency of p u, right? That is uh, p for parrot. So p u is the latency corresponding to the hardware, right? The number of cycles after which the output of u is ready. Then t u plus p u is when the output of u is ready. And t v can start, that is v can start at any time after that. So t v must be greater than or equal to t u plus p u. Okay. This is a natural constraint. I mean, you just think of what it means to have a constraint between two operations and this is what you will automatically understand by that. Now, on the other hand, if I had one delay element on the edge between u and v, then effectively what it's saying is that now the v0, which is happening at tv, right, it actually depends on u of minus 1 which is equivalent to saying that v1 depends on u0. Right? Both of these are exactly the same, provided that u and v are both going along exactly periodic patterns, which is of course the case here, because uh, after all the hardware architecture that we are constructing is a completely periodic architecture, right? There is this counter, which is going 0, 1, 2, etc., up to n minus 1, and then back to 0. And every operation has a specific time instant at which it executes. Okay. So V0 basically depends on U minus 1, U0 happens at TU, U1 happens at TU plus N, U2 happens at TU plus 2N, 
which means basically I can sort of say that u minus 1 happens at du minus n. So the question is term du is coming because of having the flop next to du. Uh, correct. So, you know, in, in terms of the architecture, one way of looking at it would be that if I had this architecture, right, then in this case, pu is equal to 1, right, assuming this is combinational. So that is the sense in which PU is equal to 1. But in general, I do not know what is happening inside the box. Right? I can just call it a black box. Right? And all that I can say is it has some PU, which is fixed, but I cannot predict it by looking at the number of registers. And the reason I'm saying that is because it might have pipeline registers, it might have multiple registers sitting in parallel with each other. So just counting the number of registers inside the box is not going to tell me what is the uh, latency. I need to have some way by which I can say that if I apply an input at some point x in time, I get the output x plus pu later. Okay. In practice, of course, it will be because there are some flops inside the box, right? which basically give it some number of cycles of latency. Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, uh, what this sequence means is that you know u zero happens at tu. Therefore, I can assume that u minus one happens at tu minus n, right? And if I write out the expression, basically I would have that tv greater than or equal to tu plus pu minus n. And if I had w delays, right? I just have to put a w in there, right? So, u of minus w happens at tu minus n times w, right? And therefore, the tv must be greater than or equal to tu plus pu minus n times w. Okay. So far, so good. Now, the question is, where is this, what is this df, why is it needed and, you know, how do I sort of make use of it? So, I have two possible cases over here, right? Think about what is actually happening. U is performing some computation, giving me an output which needs to be used by V. I have two possibilities that the V is executed exactly when the U output is produced. That is to say, TV is equal to TU plus PU minus NW. Right? So the U output, in other words, is produced at exactly the correct time when it is needed and it is immediately consumed by V. Now, that's in some sense a perfect architecture that tells me that, you know, I have managed to see internally, of course, that hardware, the black box unit, whatever is uh, the P computing uh, computation has some number of cycles of internal latency after which it gives me an output. But if I have set up V such that, you know, it executes exactly at that point where as soon as the output of U comes, in some sense, that is perfect because it consumes the output of u exactly at the time when it is produced. The other possible possibility is that tv is greater than tu plus pu minus nw. Uh, uh, question is what is n here? n is this folding order, right? Remember what I said that if you go back, right? I mean, so in this case where I have three phases of the clock, n is equal to 3. If I had two phases of the clock, then n would uh, the phase uh, clock would basically go 0, 1, and so on. You can effectively think of this as this is the phase, uh, right? So this thing over here, phi goes as 0, 1 alternating, right? And in this other case, when I have uh, yeah, with n equal to 3, then I would have something which basically, you know, there would be a multiplexer which has three options 0, 1, 2, and the 5 would go as 0, 1, 2, repeating. Okay, so it's just the number of phases in the clock. So, this second case that we have over here, where TV is greater than TU plus PU minus NW, it means that U has executed, produced its output. But V is not immediately scheduled yet. It is scheduled some number of cycles later, some number of time instants later. Okay, which means that the output of U must be stored until V can consume it. Okay, 
okay and can i get that number how many cycles does it need to be stored that is precisely my df and how do i get it just take the difference between these two sides right hand side minus left hand side right so, sorry left hand side minus right hand side by definition because of case 2 i know that left hand side is greater than right hand side therefore the left hand side minus right hand side will give me a value of df right which tells me how many cycles i need to store it now i can you know i don't necessarily need to define it only in the case where left hand side is greater than right hand side i can also define it in general i can just use this expression right and now i have basically three possible conditions right if i choose any value if i choose any arbitrary values for tu and tv right remember that for a given graph the pu that is the latency is fixed by whatever you choose for the hardware w is part of the graph itself right that's given in the graph the number of delays and n is the folding order right the number of cycles with which the entire uh, sequence repeats which is once again a hardware choice now tu and tv are the actual choices that you as the designer need to make right in, in other words you need to decide when each operation is going to execute if i choose some values of tu and tv right i can easily check using this df equation whether first of all they are valid and secondly if they are valid will they require that i store some data somewhere okay in other words if the df value ever turns out to be negative it means that the tu and tv choice that i have made is invalid i basically got some uh, causality violation happening over there right if df becomes exactly equal to 0 that is case 1 perfect right u is uh, executed it produces an output and is immediately consumed by v df greater than 0 is case 2 which means that u completes needs to wait for some time before v is going to execute and in that condition basically i will need to store the output of u for some number of clock cycles the number of clock cycles is exactly given by df now one quick word on the latency and the initiation interval right this will be something that we also sort of continue looking at later when i start giving some demos on you know what hardware uh, architectures look like for different implementations and so on but for now i think the basic thing that i want you to think about is a few, a few different options right one is pu equal to 1 ii equal to 1 initiation interval equal to 1 this corresponds to basically something very simple like this the hardware architecture that i have shown here right some combinational logic followed by a register right so what that means is that logic performs some computation and that output is stored into a register which means that that output is available in the next clock cycle that is why i am saying pu is equal to 1 okay what is ii it is a initiation interval it's basically saying at what time can i give the next set of inputs now i have computed something i have put it into a register which means that this combinational logic is now ready to take the next inputs so ii is also equal to 1 in this case okay this is what it would look like right the sequence of operations would look something like this i have a sequence of inputs in 0 in 1 in 2 on successive clock cycles and the corresponding outputs would be available out 0 out 1 out 2 and so on in the next clock cycle each time what about the second case let's say i have pu equal to 2 and ii equal to 1 right now the way that i have drawn it over here it looks as though you know i have some combinational logic followed by two registers and you are probably wondering why would i ever implement something like that right why would i put two registers back to back one after the other and of course the answer is i normally should not right it makes no sense to just have two registers over there one after the other but on the other hand what is more likely is that i have something of this sort right i have some combinational logic a register some other combinational logic and one more register this is more likely to happen right so this is for example a pipelined multiplier might look something like this okay and that is precisely what it's saying because i am also saying that ii is equal to 1 which means that this hardware architecture that i have is actually something where even though there is an initial latency of 2 i can still give input on every clock cycle 
which means at the time time will look something like this right at time instant 0 if i give an input in 0 the output will show up at time 2 corresponding to that but at time instant 1 i can give it the next input in 1 yeah i don't have to wait until out zero has been produced in order to give in one right so this is basically exactly how a pipeline system works it has a latency which is higher than the initiation interval the third possibility is that i have a sequential you know a black box with a two cycle delay which basically has some kind of latency of two clock cycles but i can't really call it pipeline because what i'm saying is while the computation is happening inside that box i can't give it the next set of inputs i can't tell it to do some new operation at this time okay what it will look like is i give it in zero wait for two clock cycles get out zero and at that same time that same instant i can give it the next input because the moment i get the output out of the system it means that in that same clock cycle i can basically give it a new input 